First, we'll start with, is there anybody here that has never been here before that would like to just unmute and say hello and introduce yourself? Good afternoon. I'm Kelly. I'm joining for the first time. Hi, Kelly. Glad you're hey. here. Glad you're here. Where are you, where are you calling in from? I am in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, good. Okay. Well, welcome. Welcome to our group. And is there Thank anybody? You. Is there anybody else that's new, or is there anybody that's not new but hasn't spoken up yet that would just like to say, give us a quick hello? Okay, so we're good. Hello, and welcome to Lulu's Way: Healthy Food, Healthy Life. My name is Barb, and I am grateful for the opportunity to be your co-host this evening. In order to keep this meeting free from distraction, we ask that all in attendance please mute yourself unless you are speaking. We also ask that if you keep the video mode turned off if you're doing anything other than sitting and participating in the meeting so that we can minimize distraction. In this community, we gather to support, encourage, and inspire on the benefits of nutrition, weight loss, wellness, and the joy that comes from choosing to serve yourself well. We are not medically trained, nor do we have formal training in nutrition. We come together here for the sole purpose of providing support sharing experiences and promoting a healthy lifestyle. It may be wise to check with your healthcare professional with any dietary suggestions or advice you receive in this group discussion, particularly if you have health challenges. Individuals in this group may have different ideas on how to eat healthy. Just figure out what works best for you and do it your way. All right, Lulu, what is the topic of the day? I didn't even talk to Lulu. Generally, Lulu and I talk before the meeting and uh yeah i just got i just well uh, well you had you had uh messaged me a few days ago with a topic that you were interested in about traveling oh i did you're right <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. we were going to talk about um eating healthy um and staying on the food plan when you're traveling so um, that's going to be the topic today, any kind of traveling. So this, in my experience, I've traveled um, three ways. I've traveled in the camper van. I've traveled um, to a place where you go and there's a kitchen, a full kitchen to use. And I've also gone to a hotel for like, like three or four days. So I'm just going to tell you how I manage those things. The camper van is, um, I just, I make sure I have a place to store all my food and I, um, I'm able to keep it nice and icy cold and I shop when I need to get what I need and I eat all my meals. I cook, prepare all my meals in this camper van. I never go out to eat. I just never want to. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't, um, go out to eat and enjoy a healthy meal. Just the right things off the menu, ask questions. So traveling in the camper van, now that I have it set up perfect for me, that I have the counter space I need, I have the utensils I need, I have the cooking um, appliances I need, and um, I have everything, I just set myself up for success. Um, so for me, that's easy. Some people in the camper van, they just, it just seems very complicated to do that much cooking and food prep and those are the people that perhaps get the canned goods and the boxed things and and um you know just eat convenience things or stop at takeouts and you know the, the fast food and stuff uh, i'm not even remotely interested in any of that so i uh, this this works for me i embrace it like we talked about last week you're either resisting or you're accepting right so i'm not going to resist I'm going to accept it's just so much more peaceful and um uh now okay so now i've just very recently uh with my friend peg that i just talked to that's here tonight um we stayed at an airbnb in saint augustine for five days together and um so easy breezy you just go to the grocery store and you go back you go to the airbnb and you put everything in the fridge and then you just you're just like in a home, in a kitchen at home. It's the same thing. Um, you know, if if I was going to be traveling with somebody that wanted to go out to eat all the time, we probably wouldn't be good travel companions. You know, it's just, you know, that's kind of like, you know, 
if somebody wanted to go out drinking like I'm not I don't want to do that right so though that those wouldn't be the people that I travel with so um, but say you're traveling with family you know that are not doing the same thing as you they're going grocery shopping for their stuff in the same you know the same they got the, the refrigerator in the kitchen and you just get your you just get your own stuff you just get different stuff I've done that too I've done that too because I've had like you know gone away with the family and you know I just eat different than everybody else and I just get what I need I get what I need and um, and they have what they need um, and then we eat like I don't know I, I think like just like eating together can be a little you know overrated I mean it's it's nice and it's sweet but there's lots of things you can do together other than just eat together so if I eat to eat at a different time than everybody it's just it's just no big deal you know um, a lot of times like when I'm making like say Christmas dinner I'm not gonna eat one thing that I'm making everybody for Christmas dinner I'm, ha I'm making my own meal um, maybe Christmas dinners at six but I like to eat at five I don't like to eat at six I could wait till six I wouldn't keel over and die but <clears throat> I'm like it just doesn't matter if I'm sitting there eating with anybody. It doesn't matter to me. If it matters to you, then you just wait till six and you can sit down and have your own meal. Or, you know, you can see what they're having and maybe not even bring your own meal and just, um, just um, if you know that they're having healthy choices, you know, and that you can make a meal out of it. I don't, I don't do that. So I can just, I'll just eat by myself at five o'clock and then uh, at six o'clock when it's Christmas and it's really it's really great because I'm kind of really present for everything and I'm I'm just like the hostess with the mostest I'm not like looking to eat you know there's not I'm not picking I'm not doing anything other than just serving my family um, so now the other the tricky the trickier part of um, traveling would be <clears throat> is when you're hopping on an airplane and you're gonna go be in a hotel so that happened to me uh, once I was going to Dallas and I was going to be, I was going to this three day conference in, in Dallas. <clears throat> so I was like, all right, what am I going to do? And I knew they were going to have like buffets of food and everything. And I thought perhaps they would have like salad bars and all that stuff. So I said, you know, do I call and ask all about it? That's one option. You call and ask all about it. Cause, um, but I just was like, you know something? <laughs> I know this is really strange, but I just brought my own meals. I knew I was going to have a little fridge and I knew I couldn't cook. So what I did, believe it or not, is I made um, uh, six meals. I made six meals. I had six containers. All right. And then the breakfast ones were small. So I had like two breakfasts and, and six meals. Yeah, because I had, all right, so the day I was traveling, I had breakfast at home, and then I had two meals in my backpack for my flight. So that was going to be for my lunch, whatever time that was going to be. I was either going to be on the plane or maybe in a layover, you know, uh, changing planes. I don't know where I was going to be for lunch or dinner that day. I wasn't sure where I was going to be, so those two were in my backpack. The other four were in my suitcase that was checked. So I had this, like, I had this suitcase that like like it's one it's almost like a big duffel bag but the bottom of it has, has like a hard shell and a separate zipper so I opened that zipper and I put the meals all in there and then zipped that up that was all in like a hard shell bottom and then the top was like a duffel bag and that's where I put all my clothes so it looked like a huge suitcase for just three days but it had it had uh, four meals in it so I had so the next and and, and two breakfasts so I had the, the, the next two days breakfast and the next two days lunch and dinner and that's just what I did and I just I I had you know I brought one fork that I just used over and over and I just some I, depending on who what I was doing if, if with the conference sometimes I got it and ate with everybody sometimes I didn't but I just I just wanted what I wanted you know and that's what that's how I work that but again the other option would be restaurants as long as you're if you know what area you're staying at I I mean I if I'm if I know I'm going to a restaurant which is very very rare um, I'm online looking at the menu you know I've got to figure it out before I get there you know and if there's nothing I'm gonna eat before I go 
you know, if I'm going with a group, I'm not going to try to control the venue. You know, I don't want to be like, no, we can't go there because, you know, they don't have salad. You know, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to, depending on the, uh, depending on the restaurant, you know, really depending on the restaurant. One time we went to this kind of like cafeteria style restaurant. And so everybody went in line to get all this. It was like this like organic place. It was all, uh all organic fresh food but I was just I saw a lot of sauces and like stuff on the chicken I wasn't sure what that was and 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 I was just like don't want any part of that so um, I brought my own meal there I felt like there wasn't like waitresses and waiters going around you know it, it was so it was easy for me but um, um, so you know I just other than my camper van, I don't really travel very often, um, but I travel a lot because I travel in my camper van, okay? And for me, this is like easy breezy, easy breezy way to stay stay on, on my food plan. And, um, um, but after all this time, really any way has become easy. It's just about thinking it through. Thinking it through where you're gonna be what you're going to do and what you're going to need. And, um, you know, a lot of times you can go into a restaurant and say, can I have the salmon just grilled plain without anything on it? You know, can I have a potato that doesn't have sour cream and butter all over it? You know, can I have like a salad and then assuming the salad's this big, you might want to ask for like a few sides of veggies because you don't go to the side menu, side, the sides on the menu. You'll see steamed broccoli, vegetable of the day, roasted asparagus. Get like four or five because they're never going to add up to sixteen ounces if you eat that many veggies. I want a big. I want a big. You know me. You know me. I want a big ass bowl of food. You know. Um, so uh, making restaurants work, it could work for me. It's not like I. It's not like I don't go because I'll be tempted. Like if I went and looked at that menu, I, I would see. You know. 95% of the stuff on the menu I'm not going to get and out of the 5% I'm like okay well let me see what I can put together but um, I don't love doing that so um, so I just assume not go tell you the truth so um, but traveling especially if you've flown somewhere and you're in a hotel and just say you don't have a car you're doing some kind of whatever on foot whatever just like that um, that conference I went to, I was just in really in one place. I don't know if there was grocery stores around there. And what am I going to do? Well, like, what am I going to do if there is a grocery store? Like, what am I going to get? And then how am I going to prepare it? You know what I mean? I don't have any dishes. I don't have a kitchen and I don't have a knife to cut anything. So I was just like, nope. It's, for me, I just really visualize uh, what it's going to look like and how I can make it work. So, um, so if anybody has any tips on traveling if you've traveled before and how it how you've made it work or if you have uh, a travel situation coming up or a travel situation that you've been in that uh, was difficult and you want to just kind of think of another way you could have done it um, we can we can just all give each other advice on that um, the traveling I just know that it's it's the most important thing that I do for myself every day and I just like I don't want to not do it like, I just don't want to not do it. I just feel too good, and I don't want to stop feeling good, you know? Um, you know, a lot of people feel like, you know, you know, you know, oh, you know, Lulu, everything in moderation, everything in moderation. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that word vaguely, <laughs> you know? I don't have a moderate bone in my body, you know? Um, so... I don't do moderate. I, I watch people that eat moderately. I see it. And I see people that it's, it's not me. That's just not me. That's somebody else. And I'm not, I'm just, I don't wish I was like that because I don't want to be anybody else. I just want to be who I am, you know? And it's like, everybody's got a little something going on, you know, whatever's going on. So what my, what's my, what's the thing that I have going on? If I had a pick from all the, 
crazy stuff might could be going on in my life right now physically and mentally and emotionally all the it's just like it's huge all the stuff that could be going on in my head in my body and 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 I just have a problem with food you know I mean I'll take it and all I have to do like my prescription is to follow that food plan it's like my prescription you know I'd rather get the I'd rather get my prescription at the grocery store than at the pharmacy so this is what I do so that's why I don't make exceptions and I don't want to try to figure out how I can do moderate moderation because I, I don't know I don't know how I have fired myself from the job I am fired <laughs> you know so um, anyway so let's uh, Bob Bob yeah thanks for that Lulu yep. you know I and the reason I asked is because this summer um, I'm gonna be doing some traveling and one one's a camping trip so I'll have my van so you know you helped already figure that one out but the other one is in a hotel and you know I had never thought about um you know I was just trying to figure out how my how my, I could do breakfast because that's easy to eat oatmeal and that's a no-brainer but um I couldn't figure out how to do the other meals and so how many days will you be there? how many days will you be there uh three nights four days mm -hmm. so I'll just do what you suggested and and make up um make up my meals that's a piece of cake that's are so you easy. flying are you flying or driving I'm going to the cake so I'll be driving oh oh so that's easy because you can just have yeah. everything in the car well, I had to fly with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's easy. It's easy now that you said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just pack a cooler. Yeah. You pack a cooler. You don't even have to ask them if they have a fridge at the because uh, every hotel has ice. You just walk down the hall. There's ice machines. You know, you don't even have to. Oh I mean, yeah, good idea. Because a lot of times, like you'd have to ask ahead of time if there's a fridge in the room. Not every hotel has fridges in the room. Sometimes they'll roll one in for you. So if you say you need one, because sometimes people need yeah refrigeration for medications and stuff. So you can get you can get a refrigerator if you ask for it. But you know if you if it's all going to be in a cooler anyway, just bring the cooler up and uh, and and just you know put new ice in it, and that's what you can do. Are you going to yeah. be with Are you going to be with friends socializing? Are you going to be with friends that want to go out to eat? Yeah. But they're, we're very, very good friends, so they'll, they'll be fine. Like, I can, uh, like, I, I'm pretty good at dinners. Like, I figured that out, like, how to go out and eat dinners. Good, yep. Um, the biggest problem is, is that I generally don't get enough food at dinner if I go out to a restaurant. Yeah, you don't. That's the hardest thing. And so, like, last night we went out to a restaurant, and the cook was amazing. He cooked it. I tell him I have a dairy allergy, which is true. And they write it right on the right on the slip, so you could say it even if it wasn't true. If dairy, like if you don't want butter or anything on your, um, you know, a little white lila like that, I think it's in your best interest. It's okay. Yeah. Um, well, and you, can, you can just say it came out. You can, instead of you can just say, I'm just telling you right now. If there's any sugar or dairy, or flour or anything in this meal, is gonna it's not gonna end well. <laughs> So you can say yeah, it kind of like, well. yeah, you can just say it kind of like with a little yeah. sense of humor, but like, trust me, it's not going to end well, you know, <laughs> they can yeah. use their own imagination yeah, yeah. on that one. But I haven't seen these friends, so they don't, they don't know my eating routine now. My friends that I see all the time, they know I bring my, I bring everything. Yeah. My baggie and yeah, but, um, anywho, but so yeah, that was great. That was, um, great notes and, uh, that was going to be very helpful for me this, this summer. So that was very targeted question and selfish by me, but thank you so much for making that <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Chris, would you like to? Yeah. So at this last meetup, obviously I was going to be in the van and the van is new to me and I've not spent maybe more than two days at a time in it. So I was going to be in it for longer and I, quickly realized that the capacity of my refrigerator is not sufficient for the quantity of vegetables I would need. So one of the things I did is I had to sort of switch up my go-to vegetables, all the broccoli I would normally eat and all the salad that I would normally eat for things that didn't have to be refrigerated. 
So things like my squashes, more tomatoes, those sorts of things. And that was really helpful. I could have brought a cooler, but when I get somewhere, I don't want to go anywhere to get ice to keep replenishing it because normally I would pre-cook all my meals. So I would just be heating meals up. And I found that worked really well for me. I didn't have to stress that I wouldn't have enough food. Um, the one challenge that I would say that I had, and that's really on me and, you know, we're all works in progress, was it's so important to stick to the routine. You know, you know, I, I really admire you, Lulu, how this is the time you have breakfast, this is the time you have lunch, this is the time you have dinner. And it could have just been the excitement of being amongst, you know, 75 like-minded women that, you know, there was so much going on that I didn't want to tear myself away. But uh, next time I'm going to make sure that I stick to the times that I should eat because that really serves me better. So, so the time, the time got away, the times got away from you. You were eating later than usual. Is that what happened? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was having lunch at three o'clock. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You know, to... you know, I'm sorry because I, <laughs> I planned all the activities around my eating schedule. Well, Notice I saw there was... you having your, your, your big salad and I thought, you should be eating in an hour, Chris, but I just couldn't tear myself away. You know, you meet someone here, you, you're having a good time here, you're having a good time there. Um, so I'm going to work on that, you know, next yeah. time. Just stick because, you know, the activities are still there. The people are still there. We're there for days, yeah. you know. Um, but that was the one uh, yeah. thing that I, I think I could do a lot better. Yeah. I just like, you know, I, it's just very important to me. So I didn't plan any activities at noon or at five. That's when I eat lunch and dinner. So everything was planned around that. So you needed to you needed to follow my schedule. <laughs> I should have. Sorry. I should have. <laughs> yeah. But um, Chris, yeah. Chris, did you find that you were eating your dinner really, really late, or did you did you end up skipping meals, or how did you handle that? Um, to be honest, one night I skipped because it was so late that I didn't want to, you know, wig out my blood sugars mm. overnight because right. normally I would not eat that late. And, you know, if my if I have a sudden swing in blood sugars, it affects my eyes. They're painful the next wow. morning. So I thought, well, <laughs> that's not good, but you can't eat now. I, I didn't feel terribly hungry, but I needed to have eaten earlier. So, yeah. Mm. I've got to work on that. That's a learning, right? That's that's just something. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You can't. You, you know, like Lulu always says, she's been doing this for ten years. Yeah. And it has a system, and mm -hmm. you know, and it's a great system. And thankfully, my my eating hours are the same as hers. So if I ever get to go to a meetup, I'll be good. <laughs> but um, I'll be changing mine but, by next winter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. Because um, I think I think it's a learning, and as you know. What would Maya say? That's what I say. But um, uh, I think I think if that's if that's your biggest learning that you really did great this this week with the, with that yeah. then, right? Yeah. Yeah. You to take vegetables that you know will keep, and then you know you you worked around that um, yeah. limitation that you had. So that's a great great idea as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. So I was going to say you. also, um, in it, it's my opinion that there's only three vegetables in a can that are edible <laughs> it, from, in me, for my world. And that's, uh, and so this is for like, to have things on hand for that don't need to be refrigerated. Artichoke hearts and hearts of palm and beets. Everything else mm -hmm. I've ever had out of a can is just not delicious to me. But um, a good brand of like, beets in a jar just make sure they're not pickled because the pickled ones are um, sugar um, and then the artichoke hearts and the hearts of palm they're really good in salads and they 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 weigh a lot so they you know they they can well well for me I have to avoid those because of the salt content oh you do mm -hmm. I really oh. have to eat fresh vegetables oh my, okay you know. so no salt yeah. okay all right yeah. well for anybody else yeah that has any trouble with you know, if you're going camping, things, you know, having trouble keeping things cool, those those are the three. I always keep those on hand. I have them under my bed 
just in case I run low or something spoils or something. Just so I have that. Thank you, Chris. Go ahead, Lulu. Take a note. Oh, Peg. Peg is next. With... Peg Robinson. Yeah. Thanks, Lulu. Yep. Hi, ladies. Hi, Peg. Hello. Glad to see you all here. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm running this week. Um, and I I hear you about the scheduling thing. <laughs> it's been a tough week for me with scheduling, but um, I was having to go to my my dear husband's been in the hospital, and so I've been having to run down there and take care of business. And today, because it's in another city that's away from me, I actually got to stop at Trader Joe's because um, we don't have one here. And I thought, oh, this is perfect opportunity for me to get something to snack on while I'm at the hospital. So um, I walked into Trader Joe's and I was so pleasantly surprised because they had they had things that were ready prepared for people like me who are not prepared, right? They had like jicama that were cut into sticks already. And they had um, shredded uh, kohlrabi and, you know, all these lovely vegetables that were good to go. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to fill my cart up while I'm here. And I, I've had the uh, Japanese sweet potatoes and I've got one of those in the oven right now because that's going to be part of my supper. Mm. <laughs> it's like I haven't I've never eaten one before, oh. so this is going to be a whole new experience. Oh, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> oh, I, I'm pretty sure I will, you know, because I like most vegetables. But, um, you know, part part of the discussion that I was seeing in the group were was about where to find foods and, you know, what you could eat. And one of the things I liked about this ready prepared stuff was that we don't always have time to do all the prep ourselves. Or, you know, some of the people in the group are a little bit older like me, and um, they may have difficulty with doing the peeling and the cutting and that sort of thing. And so the fact that they could go there, have something that's already packaged for them and that they can take away and just consume. I thought that was wonderful. Yeah. So anyway, that that's my little bit for this week. <laughs> Thanks, Peg. You know something? Yeah. I have I have a, a friend of mine that eats like me, and um, she has a, an issue with one of her hands. It's like there's like like a kind of a weakness in her hand, and she can't really do a lot of slicing and dicing. And she does all frozen vegetables. She goes to like Costco and gets five pound bags. That they, they come in five pounds each. There's some kind of a mix that she likes. It's like five different vegetables. Now, I mean, I don't, I don't love frozen vegetables, but I think they're fine. In fact, I think they're the next best thing to fresh because, you know, they, some, some people would some people would argue to say that they're probably more nutritious than than fresh because they're kind of um, they're kind of blanched and frozen like immediately where all the other fresh stuff has been on trucks all over the country before it gets to us and um, and it loses some nutrition that's that's what I've heard anyway <clears throat> but um she just gets she, she goes to Costco and gets like you know six bags so she's got like you know 30 pounds and just keeps them in her freezer and and she just takes 16 ounces out every day uh, for each meal and um, you know she's just not going to be slicing and dicing up the salads not because she doesn't have time but because that she's it just has some challenges with her hands and uh, so that's that's always an option you know if you don't have the time to prepare all the veggies good good method yeah 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 thank you Peg thank you Tell there me about your great week, Pam. Hi, Pam. Hi, hi, guys. Hi, Pam. Um, I am um, having I'm having a good week. Um, um, I am planning some traveling coming up. Um, in a couple weeks, I'm driving to Virginia to pick up my mom's sister and bring her back to New Jersey for a little while. Um, on the way down, I'm going to camp one night overnight. And then on the way home, we're going to stay at a hotel together. So um, 
but yeah, going, I already, this is very helpful because um, I already plan on bringing my cooler full of food and, and um, she'll do whatever I, you know, whatever goes, whatever I want to do, she'll be happy with, I know. Um, and, but then I'm doing um, a meetup in May with um, Butterfly Tracks. You are? Nice. Yeah. Oh, I can't good wait. For you. It's in Pennsylvania. It'll be my very first one. Yeah. And But I'm going to do three nights. I haven't done three nights, and my cooler is very small. <laughs> um, it does plug in, um, but I'm realizing as we're talking, I don't think it's going to be enough for that long, for three nights, four days. So I'm going to have to work on that. Um, but this week to treat myself for, you know, getting, doing so well, I went to the thrift store and I got a few things for my van to jazz it up and make it pretty for this year. And I found brand new, a little crock pot that I can plug into my little blue eddy. It only take, took, um, I think it was 75 watts or something. And so that way I can cook in there because um, if I need to, I have a, a stove, but it's a two burner. My son insisted I needed a two burner and I don't know that I'd want to use that inside my minivan. I'm not sure. So I thought the crock pot would come in handy. So I did a little thrifting, um, but yeah, I'm going to have to figure out, I think another more cooler space because it is pretty, um, pretty small. I'm not going to fit this much fresh food. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be my next, you know, I have to investigate which one to get that's reasonable. Yeah. So this is just a cooler, not a, not a, not a DC refrigerator. It's a cooler with ice. No, it is. The one I have is a DC. I can plug it into the car and, or I can plug oh, it into okay. my oh, power. I see. Okay. But it's very small because my initial thought last year when I started this, I took out the center console and I wanted it to fit between the two front seats. So it's a little taller, but small. Oh, okay. Um, but I really don't think it's going to handle enough fresh foods yeah. um, for me for four days. Right. It's been fine for an overnight type of thing. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if there's uh, grocery stores nearby where you're going to be camping. If you could go out after a couple of days and replenish, because I mean, when I'm at meetups, when I'm at meetups, people leave and come back. Okay. They, they're going out to get ice for their coolers. That's what was going right. on. Yeah. Okay, so I'll look into I'll look into the a grocery store. Yeah. So people will leave in to go get ice for their coolers. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right, and maybe you know I've I've been finding like I found my Instapot on um, Facebook Marketplace uh, for twenty bucks. Nice. Um, so I was really excited to get that. I love it. So I'll probably start watching there too. <laughs> and maybe I can find, get something a little better, a yeah. little bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So good. Good. But, um, but yeah, so I, I figured that was my, my treat this week for sticking with everything, but everything is just feeling easy. Yeah, good. I never thought I'd say that. Oh, isn't that <laughs> good? Doesn't it feel, it, yeah. it, it, talk about peaceful, just, it can just be yeah. peaceful. It doesn't have to be something that you're just always thinking about. You're waiting for it to end and you're just saying, poor me, poor me. And right. I wish I could have that. And you know, all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, I, yeah. And you know, I just uh, never thought I would feel that way. Yeah. I, I, it's been such a struggle. I never thought that I would just be happy and content with what I was doing. And, um, it wasn't a struggle or I feel like I'm deprived yeah, or I'm good. missing out on something. Yeah. You're not, not missing out on anything. Really good. You're not no. missing out on anything. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Do you have an issue with salt? Are you good? I do. Oh, I do. Good. I take water pill and, um, one, <laughs> I take them that do both. So I do watch my salt. So you want, you don't want the, the, the canned veggies that I talked about might be. Um, for you. Well, when you were talking about them, I do, I, I, I do. There's one that I like and it's the cut green beans. Oh, you like them. And okay. when I do, if I have to use them, I rinse them. Okay. There you go. Yep. 
That's and an rinse yep. at least some of it out and yeah. then just use it as a smaller portion because yeah. I do keep them in the house just in case because I have a very small freezer in the house. So it's mm. um, my apartment fridge and freezer it aren't huge. Mm. So I can't always keep a ton of frozen. And so you, I just have to go frequent. And can you uh, eat tomatoes okay? I don't love them. Oh. Because <laughs> like yeah, I think it was Bob that well, somebody said that tomatoes. Was, somebody, Chris, uh, Chris said, Chris yeah. Said, yeah, that you yeah. Know, tomatoes don't need refrigeration. And, you know, right. I've had a tomato salad before, just like 16 ounces of tomatoes. Or maybe with like, Ooh. with, <laughs> oh, you, did you just go? <laughs> I can tolerate a little bit of tomatoes, oh, okay. but I don't, I don't love them. <laughs> well, when they're from the garden, I, I can do 16. Oh, maybe that would make a difference, I'm ounces, sure. With a little bit of onion on them, some olive oil, salt and pepper. Yeah. Yum, yum. Yep. Yeah. But I no, would that's say a good that one be that good. doesn't need to be refrigerated. So, but. Right. Yep. You'll figure it out. Just like, you know, look for the grocery stores in the area to see where you can go. Um, also, um, I don't know what you know. I don't know about the area. If, is the, if there's like a place where you can plug in and maybe yes we do have electric oh, so i can, electric. don't have to worry about that oh yeah. nice that's very that's nice. why i was not really too worried because i do can plug in and when i was out buying myself treats i got myself a long extension cord <laughs> so yeah, um, um, get, getting myself ready little nice. by little buy yeah. something here and there good um, now do you have room in your van for a cooler like a like a big cooler like a bigger cooler <laughs> I could because you know what you I could do made it. since since electricity is unlimited because you're going to be plugged in you could use mm -hmm. your you could use your DC refrigerator just set the freezer you could freeze and, and make ice and I just always yeah. keep you could always make ice for yourself for the and then you could have a, right. a cooler a big cooler with food in it you know right just a regular cooler yeah yeah you know, then you could. Well, I could scope around. I probably could borrow one one of those from somebody. Yeah, and then you could have yeah. probably have four days of worth of food in there. Do you have any yes. of those like ice blocks? Those blue ice yes, blocks. Yes, yes, I have those. Yeah. That's that's what I do in my van. Well, you know, if you watch my channel. Okay, yeah, you know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good. So you could just fill that up with ice ice packs, and right. then and then have double. So you want frozen ones and then ones in the freezer, yeah. and just swap them out every night before I go to bed. I swap them. And yeah. everything is just stays icy, icy cold, you know. Yeah, I might, I might, yeah, I might think I about that. Getting, I didn't realize you were borrowing. Yeah, I didn't realize you had cooler. unlimited, unlimited electricity. That's why when you said, yes. when you said you had the small fridge, I was like, oh, too bad you couldn't make ice with it. But uh, that does take yeah. a lot of power. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that'll. I'll, I'll have to. Um, I'm get a hold of a little cooler and then yeah. see where I want to fit it in the van. But there is room in there. Yeah. Good. Good. So, all right. Yeah, so when is that? When is that trip? This, when is that trip? That one is May sixth. Oh. But before that is when I'm driving to Virginia. Yeah. Uh, for a few days, and um, but then that trip is May sixth. Yeah, but that so, one that you're yeah. on the road, you'll be on the road. You can stop at a grocery store anytime. But when you're yeah. when you're camping, like you kind of don't want to leave. You know. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't. I prefer not yeah. to. But I mean, no, people, I like the cooler idea. Yeah. yeah. The freezer idea. Does Does your fridge mm -hmm. go? Does it? Can you set the temp that low? Yeah. Yeah. Because it also goes to could be set up for warming. Oh. It keeps things warm. Really. Like if yeah. Wow. It has a setting to warm. And so I mean I set mine on three degrees. Can you set yours that low? I don't know if it's degrees. I'll have to double check oh, if okay. it's like how like the number degrees. Oh, oh, I, says, I think it might just be low or cool. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah give it a test. I'll look at give it. Give it a test. Good. Okay. Yeah, good. I will. I will. Okay. Good. And then I'm waiting for your next your meetup. <laughs> you waiting for my meetup? Yeah, I'm waiting for one not in Florida. <laughs> okay. They'll be coming. They'll be coming. I would okay. love to see you at a meetup. I would oh, love I that. Oh, I can't wait. I would love that. Thank you, Pam. Okay. Thanks, Pam. One, one, one more thing, Pam. I think I like Lulu's idea of pre-cooking stuff, and then you wouldn't have to worry about cooking in your van. Maybe you would just boil water or something for tea or coffee or something like that. I don't know what you're right. but... Um, you know, if you, for those trips to Virginia and even the trip to Pennsylvania, you could pre-cook all your vegetables and your protein 
and, and that might work well for you, but it's just a thought. Yeah, yeah, I probably will do some pre-cooking because it's just easier. Yeah. You don't want right. to, yeah. But even the pre-cooking, you have to keep, you got to keep the things cool. Keep it cold, but, right. But right. the day before, the day before we went to the meetup, all three of us, my two friends here, all three of us, you should have seen us. We were, we had the stoves out, our uh, stoves out. Everybody was doing, everybody was doing prep cooking because you know why? Because we didn't want to be cooked. We didn't want to do, we want to do minimal cooking when we got there because there was too much fun stuff to do. You know? Right. You don't want to be spending your time right. doing that. But you I did have to, ready. but I mean, after a couple of days, I needed to, um, I needed to yeah. do it, do some more. I needed to do some more, yeah. you know? Yep. And that was just fine. It was fine, you know. And right. we, actually, it was it was van tours time. So when people doing van tours, so I thought I opened all my doors for my van tour. Anybody can come over and see my van. But when you come over and see my van, I'm cooking. <laughs> so it's go. like, what do you want to see? You want to see my van, or you want a cooking show? What do you want? <laughs> I got it all going on right here, you know. I just, you know, I just time management. You know what I mean? Time management. <laughs> Lulu, what kind of freezer do you have, or fridge? I guess it's a freezer, it's yeah. a freezer fridge, it's, it's you a, know? It's either one, depending on what temperature. You can just set it on whatever temperature you want. So if you set it on refrigerator temperature, it can be a refrigerator. Now, the one that I right. have, the one that I have is, when I was choosing it, I just wanted to find the smallest one I could find because I wanted, right. all I wanted to do was put some, I wanted to put six ice blocks in it. So when I open this fridge, it's like the, the hole inside of it to put food in is probably the size of like a head of iceberg lettuce. That's all I could fit in it. But I can line six ice packs in it. So I have six in there and six in my cooler, which is 120 quarts. My DC fridge is nine quarts. So it's tiny. Um, and the brand that I have, it's called DOC. DOC. Um, I don't see it on Amazon anymore. If I search it, I see that I bought it and I can see it and I click on it and it brings up a different refrigerator that's similar to it. So I was like, I guess they don't have it anymore. Um, but I've seen, you just want to look for a nine quart DC freezer, freezer, fr fridge freezer, nine quarts. It's a, I don't have any fancy bells, whistles, nothing. It's just, it just sits under my bed and makes my ice every day. And um, nine quarts seems to do it. Alpacool. I think Thank Alp. You. I think Alpacool makes a nine quart one, or maybe even a 10, 10 a quart wouldn't be much bigger. But um, yeah. Okay, so there was a question. I don't know if she resolved it, but Liz from Florida couldn't raise her hand. Oh. So Liz, if you want to unmute yourself, I'll pick you next before I forget you. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Liz. Hi. Hi, Liz. There you are. I've been following you for a long time and I am not good with um, social media. I'm never on it. And so I don't know how to do this stuff. My yellow pan is always on. So I don't know if it's, if I have my hand up or if I don't. And so as a result, I've just been, and just today I figured out the camera. Oh, well, Sorry. good. You're doing anyway. good then. You're doing great, Liz. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, I've been watching you since you started. And it was at the same time that I changed the way I ate due to Lent. And I have been following you and taking in your ideas into my lifestyle. And I've lost 50 pounds. Wow. And I want to keep the Yay. Wow. So I just this past year. This, I'm sorry. Just yeah, a, this past this year. Past yes. Year. Wow, and nice. for, for this Lent, so it started last Lent last year when I changed my eating habits. And this Lent, I am um, releasing my clothes and blessing other people with a vast professional wardrobe that I have of those larger sizes nice. that I've curated from stores. And I hate letting go of it because um, I've always gone back up, you know? But this time I said, no, I am not going to do that. I'm not going back up. I am here, this is it. 
Good. And I'm not going back. And so I'm blessing others with that wardrobe. And I have, you know, bought new things that I fit in and so smaller size. And the thing is, um, I do have a question to you, Lulu, which is when you lost your weight, um, did you have loose skin? And if you did, how long did it take to go away or did you do something about it? Yeah. Um, I, do, I mean, I have loose skin like a lot of old people. <laughs> I got the... I got the I got the wing the bat wings under my arms and stuff. Um, I I don't have oh I don't have like loose skin I don't have like that those rolls of Wait. skin don't have that. Um, uh, I also you know I've had two pregnancies I had uh, both of my kids were almost nine pounds each, and um, I don't have a stretch mark, not one stretch mark yeah. anywhere. So I don't know if it's just the, my skin. You know that it just it just I don't know what it is um, but um, I you know I don't have uh, an extra firm body I don't have a body like when I was 25 but when I was 25 I didn't even appreciate it anyway because I didn't know I didn't even know I had it I've already hated my body you know um, but I love my body you know I love my body today and um, you know I just dress appropriately for you know what I've got and um and i always just i always just like feel good you know and i don't um you know um I, the only time i i can see it like it's a problem with loose skin is if the, cause some people have like a real a real lot of it that like really kind of hangs down really low uh but no i've never done anything i've never had any tummy tucks or anything but i feel um you know my my skin feels okay. like it, it feels like it's sprung back you know, it sprung back. I don't remember uh, ever thinking like, oh, wow, I got all this hanging skin. And then then I realized that I don't anymore. Like, I don't remember that happening. Like, I don't remember noticing it and then noticing I don't have it. Um, I just, um, I don't know. I mean, I wa I'm wondering if maybe when I lost it, maybe I wasn't even aware if I had it. And I don't, so I don't know. Like the answer is, is like, I don't know if it's kind of sprung back at all, you know, over the 10 years that that's happened to me or not. I can't even remember. I'm telling you, I don't know what's, <laughs> can't remember stuff. Um, I, remember. Okay. I think I'm going to remember because the extra um, stomach uh, area thing, because I had a C-section when I had my son. And it's never been the same since. Yeah. And um, I was heavy for a long time. And now I'm no, not as heavy. And I'm 10 pounds away from my ideal weight. Okay. So that's good. Yes. And um, I think that over time, my body will respond by cleaning up that area. But, but I didn't know if you did any extra exercises or did you no. what happened no. but I, I think it's over time yeah. and it will take care of itself i hope i think i think with I, time, I don't yeah. know and you know something else liz um, so, liz. as that time is going as that time is going on as you know you give your body that time to maybe readjust and, and your, your your skin to you know the elasticity just goes back until then just love just love your body you know I mean, you know what and I mean? And that's what I do. Yeah. And very appreciative. Actually, I thank my body a lot more than I used to. You thank <laughs> it? Like, there's so many things. I, I thank my body. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. When, uh, these problems, well, you know, as I'm getting older, uh, body parts are starting to hurt. And when it's, I go to a doctor and if it gets resolved, like I had a problem with my foot and it was so bad, my foot was the foot doctor the podiatrist he was so he says your foot is pissed off at you oh <laughs> i said no oh, i can't sleep it won't let me sleep anymore so i i had to resolve that issue without surgery but he did things for my foot by changing apparently i never knew my whole life one leg was shorter than the other so he put uh, me in the lift and things like that and I had to wear certain shoes now um 
where was I going with this? Oh, so now the, I don't have my pain foot anymore, my pain anymore. So just walking and continuing on my walking uh, routine, I'm thanking my body yeah. because my foot is now taking me where I, I want to go. So just, I appreciate things like yes. my arm now is hurting due to something going on in my back, but I can still reach for things. I say, thank you. You know, I, I, I'm just really trying oh, to appreciate the body's men. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Thank you, Liz. So, thank you for sharing, and, Liz. Oh, you're welcome. And I want to say, Peg, I love Trader Joe's. I love, it's very far away from where I live, but I will a few times a year go to Trader Joe's and stock up. So anybody who hasn't tried Trader Joe's yet, please, if you ever have a chance to go in there because they have really good um, food options for people who eat like this. Yeah, so they do. thanks everybody. Thanks Liz. See you again. Thanks, Liz. Thank you. Thanks Lou. All right, next up, Seattle Sue. And then we'll have Denise. Hi, oh, I really enjoyed the hello, ladies. Hi, I really en hi there. I enjoyed listening to all of you. I wasn't here last week, but I thank you for putting it on online, Lulu. I really enjoyed um, listening to all you guys last week. I was running. Um, I was supposed to report how I did with eating. My husband's having only five days of radiation, but I was running all over downtown Seattle last Tuesday, MRI in this area, and then we had to jump over to a CT scan in another area. So my, my goal was to, to plan ahead, and I did. And the, of course, the cooler in the back of the car was the answer. And the CT scan was done pretty early, so Gary and I didn't need to eat lunch. We said, well, let's just, we were already running late. So we didn't touch our lunch, but we ran to the CT scan, the other scan all the way across campus. And um, boy, by then we got really hungry. <laughs> I think I stood up at two o'clock in the afternoon and stretched and I went, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I wish I would have brought a backpack with the lunch in it. But anyway, by 3.30, we were back to the, the car. And Lulu, I had made, I was thinking about doing salads, and I thought that could get messy in the car. But I did the small Dave's bread with three ounces of deli turkey and uh, low-fat mayonnaise and a pickle. And that's what we had for our lunch, both of us. And then I brought... Uh, little mandarin oranges and water but that's what we had it served us well we were starving by the end of that day um but we will go back for radiation for five days now that was just placing the markers and the cooler in the back of the the car is really the answer and um, i'll be more creative with uh, the lunches that we'll have as soon as he's done um, I did a little research on, I'm a numbers person, kind of like you, Barb, and I always keep an eye on carbs, mm -hmm. fiber, and protein, and my sister from California, and she's a, she's a, oh, one of those nap, Ezekiel bread, Ezekiel bread, well, compared to the little tiny Dave's bread, Dave's power bread only has 12 carbs, Ezekiel has 15. Three more grams of sugar there, but and the pro protein and fiber are all high. If it's got a lot of fiber, that's a good thing. But you know, anywho, I was um, another good subject would be the family reunions that are coming up this summer. I'm already thinking how I'm going to navigate a week long family reunion, and that might be a good subject for sometime close to the summer. An idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. just another, just really quick too, Gary and I are going to the artist who's 104. We're going to go visit her Saturday. And um, my cousin Mary said, well, I'll, I can make sandwiches and stuff. And I said, you know, can we just eat before we come? We'll just, we'll just have some coffee or tea and we're going to eat before we go. But 
you don't always have to go visit somebody and and eat you know we're happy to enjoy your company but you don't have to we'll watch you and artists and whoever else eat but anyway that's all i wanted to say <laughs> so how about about the about the reunion is that something that's local to you or are you traveling there Seattle over to Lewiston, Idaho. Lewiston, Idaho is about eight hours from anywhere. Oh, so you'll from be staying, nowhere. Will you be staying in someone's house? Uh, I think we'll be taking our, our RV. Oh, well, well, yeah, that's easy. Yeah, I, I mean, RV, you just easy. You just, you know, if you just eat three times a day, there's a whole po many more hours to be spent with the people. And you'll see how present you are there when it's not all about the food. Unless, unless you see that they're preparing things that are that are something that serve you well well you know what it's going to be is jonathan's got a big swimming pool and the parties and the food and the barbecue is going to be around the swimming pool every night and i am just planning on when i go to some of these family functions i'm the one that volunteers to bring the vegetable tray a great big vegetable tray and um, i will do that but i will probably also bring my salad and if Jonathan puts a piece of chicken on the grill, it will be just grilled chicken just only, nothing yep. on it. Yeah, there you go. You'll work it. And then guess and I'll, then guess what? Throw, go throw yourself in the swimming pool and have I'll be the kid. People aren't <laughs> eating in the swimming pool. Just go in the swimming pool. <laughs> that, I, parents really appreciate it when the auntie takes the kids, you know, in keeps the pool. them busy and eat and, and drink their beer or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll be the auntie in the pool. <laughs> oh, you'll be the favorite auntie. That's what you'll be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the auntie already. <laughs> good. Good. Very good. Oh, very good, Sue. Thank you. It sounds like you're navigating your husband's uh, challenges well yeah, with your yeah. food. So yeah. do, just do the best you can and, and try to be kind to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Do I just yeah. love you. All you ladies, your your eating plans and your shows and your um, the clean eating has just been so good for me. But I had COVID for three weeks and then ended with a sinus infection uh, in February and into March. And then I went on antibiotics. And when you're a clean eater, those antibiotics go right through your system. And it's like when you're when I'm on antibiotics, I can't have a lot of salads. I can have cooked vegetables but not a lot of salads it's it'll just go right through me you know because my gut I have to I have to spend a lot of time rebuilding my gut flora with pickled things and Greek yogurt and um, kimchi and uh, sour mm -hmm. there's just so much junk you got to eat to rebuild your gut flora Can now it's doing who doesn't love kimchi though huh <laughs> Who doesn't love kimchi? Oh, I hate Kimchi's it. good for you. I, oh, oh, you I don't like kimchi? It. Uh, oh, it stinks. I had it for dinner tonight. <laughs> you did? I'll do sour. Yeah. I love sauerkraut, but oh. I don't like kimchi. <laughs> That's do you, so good. That's all right. Do you, ever take, do, do you ever take probiotics for you for that? I have, yeah, yeah, I, I did. You know, last time I forgot to do the, the probiotics, I found them in my cupboard. Um, yeah, I, I probably should this for a while because it takes a while for your gut yeah, floor to... These are, these are the ones I take right here. The, it's the uh, women's fifty. Huh? Yeah. Do you get that cost? Instead of, instead, of it's, instead of 50 and older, it says 50 and wiser. <laughs> for women, women 50 and wiser. Uh, I, I, need that. I get these from Amazon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. That was yeah. the, that was you the them all the time. Do you take them all the time? I the take, probiotic? Yeah, I take them twice a day. I have for a couple oh. of years. Yeah. Not because do I had any Greek, issues. Do you eat Greek yogurt too or just no. the probiotic? Just the probiotics. Twice a day. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll start up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Thank you. you know, if if you if you have that issue, then maybe that will help you too, you know. But, you know, if if you get to a if you're in a situation where the salads go right through you and the cooked veggies are working. Just have cooked veggies all the time. I mean, there's no, there's nothing wrong with having cooked veggies all the time, if that's what you need. You know, it's, it's only when I'm on antibiotics, which isn't often. Yeah. It, it, it isn't often. Um, 
Yeah, so like I, I'm, I'm not on antibiotics very often. That's my first time with probiotics. I think pills was last winter when I had a sinus infection. So I didn't know that you could take them when I'm not having that problem anymore, but, but I'll um, take the pills anyways before they expire. Yeah, I just, I just take them as just kind of a maintenance, a maintenance thing, you know? Yeah. 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 Very good. Anyway, thanks, Sue. Thanks so much. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Denise. Hi, Hi. Denise. How are you? I'm good. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but we're You got the same one? You got the same one? Yeah. (laughs) Same thing. Same thing. And that's part of my maintenance, too. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? So, I have a couple of things. Um, the scale wasn't moving for, I started this in maybe after January 1st. Um, so, the scale wasn't moving at all. And so, I was getting very frustrated because I was eating salad and veggies. And um, I couldn't figure out, like, what's going on here? All of a sudden, last week, I started losing just just losing very easily. I don't know what happened. Within the past couple of weeks, the scale's just been moving and it's really been moving. So, um, I don't know, someone told me something about, um, I was drinking carbonated water and someone was telling me that might be messing with metabolism. I've never heard of that before, but, um, so I kind of stopped drinking that and um, so here, here are the things that have been working, um, planning ahead, um, accepting that, like, do I really want to do this? Because it was a part of me that was kind of like, yeah, I'll do it, but I wasn't really committed. And then, um, finally in January, I said, okay, I'm going to commit to this and see what happens. So that, that, that's a good thing. Um, then uh, the other piece of this is forgiveness when I slip because I had a situation where everybody's saying, oh, wow, look at you. Your pants are really loose and it looks like you lost a lot of weight. So here I'm thinking, you know, I'm getting real cocky. And um, next thing you know, I'm look, I'm snacking. Hmm. Uh, so, so that... So I had to turn that around really quickly, like really quick, like at the snap of my finger. Um, so I did that and then, um, changing my routine. So I have a situation here where I'm a caregiver and I, not only am I a caregiver, I work 40 hours, but I also, well, more than 40, it's more like 60. But, um, anyway, I have aides that come in and, and relieve me at certain times. And when they come in and relieve, I want to get the heck out of the house. I'm like, get me out of here, get me out of Dodge, put me anywhere. Hmm. Um, And what I realized was when I'm like, the desire to be out has been greater than my desire to plan to eat well. Now that's changed so that I will go out for an hour and I will come home to be on time for my meal. And then go back out again if I if I want to. So that's a big change. Um, I donated six bags of clothes uh, within the past couple of days, and I also have the problem with uh, the loose skin, and I've also had a hysterectomy. Um, I had cancer in '96, and um, yeah, and I was kind of curious because it sounds like. My um, opening is vertical rather than horizontal, and I can feel like the skin, like just kind of hanging a little bit there. But um, anyway, it feels good that the skin is hanging. What can I say? You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, as long as it doesn't go too too far hanging. But um, anyway, all is good. Um, you know, plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead. Um, and yeah. And I have to say too, Lulu, when I, when I did meet, meet you, I had the worst sciatica ever. 
and now I don't have those that that sciatica but when i did walk hike with you that day with with barb and i think um i can't remember the other woman's name uh, masha but i did notice that you don't really hike you you walk really 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 fast yeah so the, so that might have have to do with you know the metabolism and and keeping things like the weight and the the flab and all that stuff. I don't know if that's part of it, but I did notice when you walk, you were like way ahead of us. I was way back, of course, because of I had the like the worst sciatica that day. Mm. But um anyway, I did notice that the the walking might be a key piece. Mm. So I've been doing a little walking with more walking with the dogs than usual. But anyway, just uh, thank you for this. It's it's been great. Um, it, it's been a kind of a a tough commitment, um, but it's mm-hmm. doable. I have, a, know, I have a I have a yeah. I have a question for you, Denise. When when those yeah. when those weeks were going by and you the the scale was not budging, um, you still stayed on the plan. And like how did yeah you, just and and then and then you like how did you uh, how did you not like want to just give up? Like tell, share with everybody how you just like to get through that, and then and then the numbers start going down. Like sometimes you got to wait for it. I, I've talked about that before. Yeah. And you waited for it, but so, a lot of times people get dis- discouraged. How did you not get discouraged to the point that you just ab- um, abandoned it? Like how did you stay committed? You just want to do it. Yeah, just just want to change, you know. Yeah. Just just want to see like, can this really work? Yeah. You know, and I think, and I think the other thing is, is like so much is changing in my life right now that um, I, I'm just thinking like it's just all part of it. You know, like so much is out of my control right now that it's kind of like I, I'm just letting letting it go, like just just flowing through. Like you know, I got a gazillion things happening with with. Uh, mass health and the AIDS and uh, my partner's health and uh, stuff at work and because uh, I'm a team lead and and there's always stuff going on and I have a ticketing system that I have to get like so many tickets done per day and I'm I'm working right now but I'm really not um, so so I I think just staying with staying with it. You know, and I think also the um, the Wayne Dwyer book club is helping a lot too. You know, oh, the, it, it's an internal change too. It's not just yeah. physical; it's it's the internal stuff that we tell ourselves every day. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if that answers the question, but uh, yeah, just st- stay with it. I mean, you know, yeah. but I think in the, in the beginning too, I was playing a little. You know, I, f- I felt like. You know, like I would give myself Sunday would be my day to cheat because my friends came over, yeah. and I would see myself cheating a little bit yeah. because that, they, that were stops, there. they were there. That stops. That stops the weight loss doing that. Because mm-hmm. you know you got to think about the volumes of food that are on this food plan. Like you don't eat all this volume of food and 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 get away with too much cheating. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. So that's 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 probably it. And then, so when you start, started seeing the results again, was it when you were you buckling down and not doing that anymore? Yeah, yeah, that, I, that explains it. Yeah, because I mean, and it wasn't anything big, you know what I mean? It yeah. was just like I've so every Sunday I have I have dinner with two friends that come over. And um, like the even the meals for them have changed, and I, I I just said to them, I said this is the way I'm eating, and I said if 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 it's not appealing for you guys, I said just you know bring your own stuff or order out and have it come in or whatever. But there's so many choices and there's so much stuff you can do. But you know I've been making salads every week with a protein, mm. and and they're fine with it. They have no issue with it at all. None yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. And the other thing I have an issue with with here is we have a lot of people dropping over all the time. 
um, and they're always bringing stuff. Oh yeah, and it, it's just like a constant, like a revolving door of me in taking food in, and then me making the decision to either give it to a neighbor, run across the street immediately, give it to a neighbor, dump it in the trash, but get rid of it like almost immediately, because. Nobody when wants it's it? there in front of you, nobody, nobody wants, wants it. it. Nobody wants well, it. Well, my, my partner, I mean, they bring stuff over, but my partner has, um, she's on puree diet. Uh, so they bring in candies, cookies, cakes. Nothing is nutritious at all. No. Like nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I'm constantly trying to navigate this stuff out of the house. I mean, even sometimes the aides will bring food for me. And I, even after telling them and explaining to them, like, I can't eat this stuff. I'm, I'm just, it doesn't serve me well. I, I don't enjoy, like, I don't say I don't enjoy it to them, but I, I just, uh, you know, I, I can't eat the stuff. So yeah. sometimes, unfortunately, I'm just dumping you it. Who is um, battling cancer as well, Denise. And um, uh, she... <laughs> You know, everybody has the best of intentions, and I'm, I'm sure you know that. And and yeah. she just flat out said, please, no food, because the first couple of days, everybody was like, wah, 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 wah. because mm. that's 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 the caregivers in all of us, right? We think, mm. well, we're going to help you with food, and, you know, so we, that's what we do. And, you know, she said, thank you, everybody, but no food, please. I'm, mm. We're good. We have enough food. If I need anything, yeah. I'll ask. And it seemed it's it's she's put everybody at bay, and it, in a in a nice way. So I don't know if that will help you, but it's uh, mm -hmm. I feel your pain. My I, mother, she did the same thing, and she was like, because she has four daughters, and we all cook like crazy, and she was like, stop, <laughs> my yeah. freezer is full. So yeah, and you know if you but know, congratulations, thank yeah. you. You know if, if you know those people are coming over. Or do they just show up unannounced? Um, they usually let me know ahead yeah. of time. Maybe you could just say, just a heads up, you know, she's not eating anymore. Yeah. And, and I'm and I've kind of changed things up. So please, please just bring bring your beautiful company. Just bring, yeah. all we yeah. want is your company, and just say I'm not eating any of that stuff, and she can't, you know. So um, yeah, you know, maybe that that's just. Just to kind of just say, just, you know, all we want really is your company, you know, that, yeah. that's an option. Another little tiny bit of suggestion I have is when you, you know, get out of Dodge, when you get out of Dodge, when the aides show up and you get out of Dodge, if I was you, mm -hmm. if I was you, <laughs> I would take my meal with me so I wouldn't have to come back, yeah. take your meal with you, go find a pretty park to sit in, bring a book and just be by yourself. And don't you don't have to go home to make the meal and just enjoy it right there, you know? Go in your little yeah. camper van, your new camper van that you told me about. Yeah. <laughs> How's yeah. It? Did you get it? It's, it's, it's a little chilly here. Yeah, I have to yeah. Say. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you you can go you can go yeah. you can go park somewhere and just run the heat <laughs> and have your meal. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been doing Denise, that. Can I ask where you are? Yeah, I'm in uh, Massachusetts. Oh, all right. Yes, it is cold here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Especially today, it's really bad. But <laughs> ass cold is what today was. <laughs> thirty mile, thirty mile an hour winds and temperatures below freezing. And Lulu, don't come back yet. Okay. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. All right. Almost. Thank got... you so much, Denise, and you're Thank doing you. great. And thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Really and good. Really good. Repeat. Yeah. I, I just wanted to hi. I just wanted to say to Denise, I think um, I know for me the the book club, the Wayne Dyer Club on Tuesday night meetup is has been a huge contributor to this um, because I'm learning it's okay to take care of myself and to think of myself. I'm important. Um, and that's, I think, what's making it become um, not so much of a struggle. And when your life, like Denise, your life is is in like such chaos, 
you're sticking with it, um, it's the one thing in your life you can control. You've got control over this and um, to take care of yourself. And um, I think that's, I, I, I just, I do, I think about it all the time, though, is the work we're doing out with the Tuesday Club, um, just how much that helps and how much it has contributed. Um, stick with it, Denise, you're doing great. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Pam. That's yeah, I agree. My insight because of Wayne Dyer's book has grown immensely in these past. Yeah, I don't even know how long it's been. Eight months? Has it been eight months or something we've been together? Well, we're on we're on know. verse thirty four. So thirty four divided by four is what? Eight months, eight and a half months. Oh, eight months, yeah. And that's almost nine months because we had a we had a uh, we had a week without so. Oh yeah, yeah, thirty-four is fine. Yeah, eight and a half months, something like that. Yeah, and it's been a long, it's been a long time, and it's been really, really good, really good. Yeah, I can see why you've done this a few times, Lulu. Yeah, especially with different people because you get different perspectives, right? Yep. But you know something? Even if you do it with the same people, you just you're different. When you go all the way back to the beginning, it's just it's like a whole oh, yeah. it's a whole different book. You know, yeah, yeah. You're in a different place, yeah. you know, and um, so it's yeah, it's it's really good. It's really good. So Denise, I got. Right. I'm, I'm I'm in the middle of planning a, a Massachusetts meetup in June, so I'll give you the heads up, okay? All right. Thank you. I'll start planning my meals now. <laughs> <laughs> Refrigerator, cooler. Yeah, you need the whole thing. Yeah, if you need any. Cooler space. I got a big ass cooler. You can put some of your stuff in my cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody else like to like to talk? Hi Sue. Hi Sue. Hi. Um. So. I am such a food addict, and I've always been, and I'm unhealthy, and I'm really needing to do this program. I went to a meeting with other overweight people this morning and it was refreshing just to hear other people's stories on their struggle with food and it's like crazy. Um, so I'm going to continue going to that meeting and this helps me out a lot. I, I check in a little bit late sometimes. I'm over here in Arizona so the time difference thing is um, different for me. It used to be a 2x and I have all these beautiful clothes that I want to wear and now I'm a 3x and I live in a small town and my car only makes it in and out of Sedona it doesn't make it out of Sedona so there's one store here that I could shop at they never have 3x so I just check Goodwill every day um so it's like I, I can't afford to just go on at the internet and buy a whole new wardrobe um right now so it's just crazy how, you know, how you get ready in the morning by talking to God or whatever, whatever, talk about myself. And that like sets the tone for the day. But I'm just like praying that, um, that I can do this because I really need to for my health. Really, really. And I'm, I'm trying, I'm right now I'm in a step study program, um, working on tobacco, but that hasn't gone well because it goes salt, sugar, cigarette, cigarette back to sugary. And it's like, I'm eating like frozen things in the middle of the night, sugary things. Um, and then I wake up with wrappers like all around me. It's just, it's good. It's, uh, it, I can't, it's unmanageable for me. And in my little daily inventory book at the end of it it says so what action do you need to take so for the past three weeks it's like lulu's way lulu's way lulu's way so they asked last week does anybody have any reoccurring answers and i was like i do no. uh, lulu's way. <laughs> you know so i really know that 
um thank you nicole i know i can do this and like seeing you guys i've been just like hiding out in the background but seeing people like really you can see you can see it in their bodies and in their spirit like the gift that it is lulu and it's a big gift. just thank you yeah. so much i just need to do it yep i hope um have you started it sue yet have you started lulu's program yet no i'm just trying to stay away from the flower right now like i um yeah I can't, I can't like concentrate on the cigarettes at all right now. It is what it is. And I hope that it, it just goes away because I'm healthy. And why do I want to smoke? Like, even though they're all natural, I, I just do these, all these excuses like, oh, we've been smoking all natural for 10 years, but I have to choose life. And like Lulu said, you know, how she changed, how Lulu, you changed your life at 55 it's like i'm 52 i'm a diabetic i'm tired of shooting up with insulin um like i have such a um insulin belly uh, but i've done it before and i used to weigh a lot more than i weigh now but it's between menopause and i've lost 14 people in the last two years like people that were close to me so it's like now i joined a grief group and i'm trying to get going and to the gym and yoga and trying to create this whole new life for myself because when I came back from Boston to be in Sedona, four of my friends had passed and I knew that because I, you know, I, I, talk, I would always talk with them, but it's like these four people that occupied my week here, you know, and they were all gone. So it, was, it felt like I came back to having to start all over again. And then the food is a comfort. So it's, of course I have to hit up every single restaurant cause I'm back, even though the food isn't even good here. Like, so when I was in Boston, it's just like, I, I have food that I sent here, shipped here in the freezer, uh, like Mike's pastry. And I'm thinking, how am I going to throw that away? Like, uh, how am I going to throw that away? That's like, that's my biggest problem. How am I going to actually get, get the stuff out of my house? You know? So that's where I'm at. And hopefully I can go back to looking cute in my clothes. Cause like I'm wearing, well, like uh, this here, I got at the gap on clearance in the winter, but, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to at least getting back to my other size, you know? 40 pounds ago but I do love myself and I've always loved myself so I don't have a problem with like self-confidence but when I can't get up and like mm. pick a cute outfit out to be out then it doesn't make me feel mm. cute you know <laughs> so anyway yeah. thanks for listening everyone and Hopefully my face will be shrinking soon too. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. You know, just, I you know, it, it. It, you know, I, I guess, um, just what's coming to my mind is like, you just, it feels like overwhelming all these things. And now, and then, so you get like the smoking, the food and, and then the diabetes and you got the, uh, and then you're doing like the yoga and da, 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 and like, I think if you just focus on the food for right now and just get, okay. get just get your food right, mm -hmm. everything is going to stem from that. So many good things are going to happen from that, you know? Yeah. So many good things. Your diabetes is likely going to take a shift and your, your weight will take a shift and you know, yoga isn't the answer. <sighs> Yoga is not a bad thing at all. Walking isn't a bad thing at all. But if you got one thing to do and to put your energies in into, it would be your food. You know, and okay. just and just um, that feeling of breaking promises to yourself every day that gets really, it's really hard. It's really hard, you know, to just always be breaking promises to yourself and just to put your head on the pillow at night and say, I kept my promises today. You know, I, I followed the food plan and you know, I'm not going to wake up skinny in the cute outfit tomorrow, but life isn't a fashion show. I always say that, you know, life isn't a fashion show. 
you know it's I mean it's great it's great to look cute and something but you know there's something bigger here this there's, there's it sounds like there's some health issues and and that you're not comfortable and um, I would just love to see you live your life more healthy and comfortable because it's just that nothing beats it you know nothing beats it yeah you know so stick around Thank you. I yeah. need to choose life, really, yeah. at this point. Yeah. It's like choosing and, and that's life. What, yeah. And that's what food is. Food and water. It's life. Yeah. Without it, there's it no is. life. You know? Yeah. And, and all this food is, like, just alive and ready to just nourish you and make you well. You know? It's all designed to make us well. Not, yeah. all that, not all that shit that's in those middle aisles <laughs> at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. You know? That stuff is... It's what's causing yeah. all the problems. But, you know, just, just just like every meal you have that's all fresh and colorful and beautiful, that's you're just breathing life right into you. And it's just, like, just keep doing that. Keep that cycle going, that cycle of in with goodness and, and, and releasing the, the, um, the, the health challenges and the weight and everything will just happen, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Well, you stick around. Thank you soon. so much, guys. Okay. Okay. See you soon. Bye bye. Can I say a word of encouragement <laughs> to Sue? Ed, Ed, yeah. Or, yeah. You know, um, to back up what Lulu said, uh, Sue, um, you know, to really take control of the diabetes, everything. You know, what really helped me starting out was keeping a food diary. And I know that Barb has talked about a food diary in the past. You know, you, when you write it down, you know, and when I was starting, you know, dieting, the, the freedom, when you write down your food and what you eat, it's, it, it's, it, it's freedom. If I ate two Oreos, I wrote it down. If I ate it, I claimed it. And of course I had a budget of only 1500 calories a day. Do I want to eat six cups of broccoli or a scoop of ice cream? The choice is mine. I eat it, I claim it. Well, now I'm older and wiser and every calorie that goes into my, my face, I want it to be good, good to me and serve me well. But to take control of diabetes, to take control of your eating, just write it down and see what you're doing. You'll encourage yourself, I feel. And then you will start, you know, just not bringing in um, the bad food. You'll just start, I can't bring that in. I need to bring in the good food, you know? And just don't, like Dr. Phil says, just don't bring it in. It doesn't have a place in my, my life anymore, you know? But I just yeah. encourage to start start doing a, a food, food journal in the simplest way simplest notebook write it down whatever you eat claim it and just claim it thanks be so. a good okay. thank you yeah thanks good. god bless hey. yeah okay chris you're up chris hi suri um as a di as a diabetic myself i know how difficult it is when I was first diagnosed, my blood sugars were over 900. They were amazed that I was actually walking and not in a diabetic coma. The first thing I want to say is that you're in a safe space here. You can let it all hang out. There's no judgment. We're all at different stages. And we're all hoping to get where Lulu is, where we can sustain a way of life that is healthy for us. You will find a a recurring idea in our collective experiences, which is preparation, prepping. For me, what was useful, and I don't know if you live alone, it's difficult when you live with others, but if you live alone and you can try to purge the things that are not serving you, maybe you could donate them to a food pantry. You'll hear us talk about, for the most part, shopping the perimeter of the grocery store. I can tell you that in the beginning that was difficult for me because the aisles are right there. And a diabetic is drawn to the sugar as much as the sugar is killing us. It's a horrible addiction. 
So you're drawn to it and the aisle is there. So what I found myself doing is finding small farmer's markets where there was no candy, there was no soda. So I would buy the things that I needed to buy. So it might help you to shop in those places where those temptations until you become stronger because it does get easier. And as a word of encouragement to you, I was able to come off of insulin. So I came off of insulin. It can be done. Wow. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not where I need to be. But I was able to come off of insulin because I would wake up in the night and my blood sugars, I would feel unwell. It would wake me up. They'd be between 40 or 60, too low. My doctor, amazed, said, okay, let's cut the insulin out. So it can be done. Baby steps. Start with the prep to put yourself in the best position to resist that temptation until you become stronger. You'll hear us all say it takes a while. You you heard Pam saying it. She's at peace. She never thought she could be content in what she was eating. You'll get there and you're in the best place to hear our experiences, hear where we fall down and hear how we make changes so that we can pick ourselves up without being annoyed with ourselves, dust our knees off and keep moving forward. Be encouraged. You can do this. We're behind you just as we're behind each other. Keep going. Don't give up. You can do it. Thank you, Chris. That was well said. Very well said. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, There's Chris. I got my dose of Chris this week. I feel good. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And let Chris H. You're next. Hi. I just want to say I'm pre-diabetic and um, my grandmother was a diabetic, but, and she was on medication, not insulin. But she reversed her diabetes and with her diet. So she went off her medication and she lived to be 99 and a half and um, kept it under control with her food. So I thought that was a really inspirational, for me it's inspirational, okay, that, that she could do it, I could do it, and we all can do it. And um, so, I have to tell you that I, the scale has not been moving uh, as fast as I, I I was, okay? <laughs> but I'm okay with that because I'm telling you, I feel so much better. I sleep better. And um, I usually have pain in my hips and my lower back, and that's going away. And I figure you just focus on the things that are positive and and keep working the food and that the weight will come off that's not the main goal anymore for me you know it's there but the feeling good and and seeing the improvement every day and every week is i think the main focus and when i'm not focused on that and i start to kind of get mad at myself i'll go focus on something around the house that needs to be done to keep my mind in a, a, a progress place in some way. And um, I think that's it. That's all I had to say. Oh, thank you. Sue, did you want to say something, Sue Ray? No, I'm, I'm digesting okay. everything. Yeah, I hear you. It's a, it can be over, overwhelming. But thank you for talking to all of you. That was um, thank fantastic. You. and. Just, uh, oh, Liz, Liz from Florida has her manual hand up. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Sue Ray, I don't know if this will help you, but this is the way I look at it. I am loving future Liz by preparing something for her. I am not benefiting from it right now. But the time that I'm taking to prepare something for future Liz, when I come home after a long day of work or after a stressful event or whatever, and I'm eating something, I actually say, I know it's weird, but I say, thank you, Pastor Liz. Thank you for taking care of me. 
I don't know if that helps, but that's how I look at it. I am loving myself by taking care of future Liz, preparing in advance, planning in advance, you know, all the steps is for future Liz. So I don't know if that helps you looking at it that way, but that's how I look at it and it helps me. So I wanted to share. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Thank you. I can't believe you said that because I always say this is for future Lulu. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. When I do all my prep cooking, I'm like, this is, this is, uh, I'm getting future Lulu all set up. Yep. 